Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Natural immunity versus vaccinated immunity. This is a very interesting topic of debate and I wanted to review a few research studies with you in this video. Unfortunately, the topic of natural immunity has become somewhat controversial over the last 18 months or so. I believe needlessly, because there are some people out there who equate every mention of natural immunity with being against vaccines and vaccination programs, which is absolute nonsense. Natural immunity is a biological fact. You recover from an infection and you will develop a degree of your own natural immunity and antibodies. And it is certainly a worthy medical and scientific debate about how long those antibodies last, but we cannot deny natural immunity as a basic fact of biology. Remember, right at the beginning of the pandemic, all the talk in the media was about antibody passports. This was widely reported. Now the talk, of course, is about vaccine passports. And there are understandably all over the world, lots and lots of people who through no fault of their own have been unfortunate enough to get COVID-19. They've recovered from it and they understandably have this question on their minds. So let's dive into some data and some research then. And I want to start first with a study from Israel from the beginning of the summer. The study was titled, Protection of Previous sars cov Infection is Similar to That of Vaccine Protection, a Three-Month Nationwide Experience from Israel. And the researchers analyzed an updated individual level database of the entire population of Israel to assess the protection efficacy of both prior infection and vaccination in preventing subsequent COVID infection, hospitalization with COVID, severe disease and death. Vaccination was highly effective with overall estimated efficacy for documented infection of 92.8%, hospitalization 94.2%, severe illness 94.4% and death 93.7%. Similarly, the overall estimated level of protection from prior COVID infection for documented infection is 94.8%, hospitalization 94.1% and severe illness 96.4%. Our results question the need to vaccinate previously infected individuals. Then there was a large study from the Cleveland Clinic in the United States a few weeks ago, which concluded this. Individuals who have had COVID infection are unlikely to benefit from COVID-19 vaccination and vaccines can be safely prioritized to those who have not been infected before. The cumulative incidence of COVID-19 was examined among over 52,000 employees in an American healthcare system. COVID-19 did not occur in anyone over the five months of the study among 2,579 individuals previously infected with COVID-19, including 1,359 who did not take the vaccine. Within the last couple of weeks, we had actually a smaller study come out from Kentucky, which did show a small benefit to vaccination in previously infected individuals. And this was interesting because it was widely reported in the media and the authorities were using this study as a reason to push for a major public policy. And if you go online, it was actually very interesting. A lot of medical professionals were highlighting the fact that this was an extremely poor study. And surely rule number 101 of public policy is you don't use small studies to push for major policies. To be quite frank, that study from Kentucky, which did, to be fair, show a small benefit to vaccination, a second year medical student could have poked holes in. We also saw in the last couple of weeks some authorities out there jump all over this small, poorly designed study and say that the debate is over. Remember, whenever you hear that statement, the debate is over, the science is settled, or I am the science, goodness gracious me. We've heard so much of that over the last year and a half. People in our field should have humility. Rarely is the science settled. To me, this is still a very obvious gray area that is up for debate. And I believe that it's a very strange academic hill to die on for anyone to say that somebody who has high levels of antibodies documented should absolutely get vaccinated with a vaccine that was tested originally against that same version of the virus that they got. To me, this seems very strange indeed, and it is worthy of further debate. It is a gray area. Do the vaccines provide for greater protection against variants if you've had prior COVID infection? Again, this is also a debatable issue, and we're getting more data all the time. 
Remember that for those of us in rich Western countries, we have the luxury of this debate. While most of the world struggles to get COVID-19 vaccines, this is a much more pertinent issue because they will need to prioritize the vaccines. And a lot of data so far suggests that they should be prioritizing those vaccines to people who haven't had COVID. And this applies to areas of the world with likely hundreds of millions of people. I am looking at this from a global perspective as well. So I would like to conclude this video with these four points then. Number one, we have seen some smaller studies which have suggested that if you give the COVID-19 vaccine to people who already have antibodies and have had prior infection, you will get an antibody surge. Nobody is doubting that, but I've also seen some very prominent figures in medicine, even professors at major institutions, deduce that that means that the vaccines are of benefit. And the logic here is actually stunningly flawed. That is like me saying to you, if I give you two units of blood, if I transfuse you, your hemoglobin will go up, therefore it's a good thing. Actually, we treat patients in medicine. We don't treat numbers. Just because the numbers go up, if I give you blood and raise your hemoglobin, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you or will benefit you if your hemoglobin was already okay. Number two is a very obvious question. People say they don't know how long immunity lasts for after you recover from COVID-19. That's very true. But also looking at this logically again, nobody knows how long immunity lasts for after a vaccine either. And we're already seeing a lot of evidence that it wanes especially in those vulnerable groups and that's why we're talking now about booster doses within a year of people already getting vaccinated the first time round. The third point I would like to highlight is the individual aspect of this. Immunity is highly individual. This seems to have been lost in the whole COVID-19 debate. What happens in one person doesn't necessarily happen in another. How somebody responds to an infection is different from another and how anyone responds to a vaccine is also different to another. And of course, perhaps some groups want to be more cautious than others. There is rarely a one size fits all approach in medicine. There are a lot of nuances. There's a lot of gray out there. And this leads to number four. The only way to ultimately tell if somebody is truly immune to COVID-19 is to devise some sort of blood test which checks for antibodies or some other facet of immunity. And actually, a lot of institutions now are working on this. That is the only way to tell. But guess what? Those blood tests which test for immunity will also very likely return positive if people have had prior infection because those tests are also going to pick up natural antibodies. This is a very worthy topic of debate within medical and scientific circles. The debate is not settled by any means. We want more data and research, but if people are showing on blood tests high levels of immunity, high levels of antibodies, whether or not they would benefit from a COVID-19 vaccine is still in question, and that is backed up with previous studies. Thanks everyone for listening. Let me know your thoughts down below. Dr. Sunil Dand, Medstroik Lifestyle Medicine. We will speak again very soon.